that this film uh, really shows that the consequences of poverty and inequality are far-ranging and they affect every area of your life. I mean, you know, the way you eat, the way you live, the way you entertain yourself, but your temper, your house, physical house, mental house, your education, you know, your criminal records, your alcohol intake. It's you know absolutely incredible what the consequences of poverty can have. And actually, I identify a lot with some of those people because I'm a part-time I'm a part-time administrator in a museum in Liverpool. And in 2010, when the Tory came to power, I had been working full time for about two years because there was extra work and there were uh, money, but it was on fixed term contracts. Uh, but I was financially independent, going to the gym twice a week, eating organic foods, going to the cinema and theatre now and again, be able to socialize. With the budget cuts, I was put back on part time hours, and suddenly I became financially, financially dependent of my partner. Uh, which led to our separation uh, and then uh, suddenly I lived in one room with no central heating, no sink in my bathroom, no freezer, no microwave, no cooking space. I couldn't afford to go to the gym uh, or the cinema or socializing. We clearly, my health was suffering and my mental health was, was suffering. It was an absolute nightmare. And many museum workers uh, and other workers as well, but I, you know, I, more for museum workers, yeah. they go through the same situation. We've got many uh, private contracts in museums and galleries where cleaners or security guards work on zero hours contract with no sick pay, no holiday pay, treated hor horrendously. And uh, many of them are migrants, some of them don't speak English, which make it even more difficult to you know, try to tackle these issues. In my workplace, uh, people declaring they've got mental health issues have tripled in the last five years. It's been actually really visible and actually shocking. Been dealing with suicidal workers, mm -hmm. uh, people losing their houses because they can't uh, afford their mortgage. You know, comi people coming to work sick because they don't get sick pay and uh, they're not going to get paid if they're not in. And when we see uh, the number of redundancies that have been in the civil service and public uh, sector areas, often uh, it's people with disabilities who are first out of the door, you know. Um, and so uh, it's clear that uh, poverty and inequalities disproportionately affect black people, women, disabled people, and, you know, generally the minority groups. But I think maybe to conclude on that is Capitalism is clearly shaping our ma material lives, uh, but it's also shaping our beliefs, our aspirations, our understanding of what happiness is. Uh, you know, we've got, oh, you know, to be happy, I need a car, I need a house, you know, I need th those material possessions. Um, and we see, like, the, the rich guy is actually really unhappy, he's not having a really great life. So, so the, how do we, do we fight that? Um, for me, it's about refocusing on the collective. Yeah. Because the collective not only gives us the tools and the power to fight inequalities, to regain control of our lives, but also the collective gives us this connection. Zita was talking about communities. It's giving us that you know, human connection. And somehow, I think that you know, what <coughs> momentum uh, can play a role in that is yeah. reconnecting people not just in the Labour Party, but also people who are outside the Labour Party working <coughs> together, building this solidarity. So that's what that film sort of inspired me to, to share with you tonight. Thank you.